Jeremy Cook here, and over the past year or two, I've been designing PCBs of many shapes and forms. A lot of them turn out great, a lot of them turn out to be just mistakes that I have to do away with. Well, in the end, these things are quite beautiful, so I decided I needed a way to display them. What I came up with uses WS2812B LEDs and looks really great. It's laser cut, so the first thing I had to do was cut out the materials for it, which is a quarter inch MDF and hardboard on the back. Here's the design in Fusion 360. You can see it's just a couple of layers of MDF over the hardboard. Small layer there, another layer on the top, and on the bottom there's gonna be some LEDs that, that light it up. So we'll, we'll go over that a little bit later. It's a hall of fame and shame, you might say, because it's, well, you know, some good stuff and some bad stuff too, some mistakes, some good boards, and just some stuff that was kind of left over. To cut this out for the laser, you just do a, um, you do the sketch and you save it as a DXF. That's a great technique. It really saves a lot of, a lot of time. You can open it up in Lightburn and design your laser cuts. So let's see how those turned out. Cut all the way through this. That's, that's a good, it's a good sign. Well, mostly. Hmm. Guess we'll see. It would seem that I probably need to align my laser, but on this edge, what I did was I just cut it out with this box cutter. Not too bad of a solution. And there's the bottom piece there. This was cut out in a hex pattern, so it would just encapsulate the nut when I put it in there. I also used some hot glue to hold it in place. Originally, I was gonna use these non-addressable, this non-addressable LED strip, but after some experimentation, addressable strips obviously give you a lot more versatility. There's the hardboard for the back being cut out. The non-reflective kind of bumpy surface gives it a nice, nice surface to kind of show off the PCBs without being too shiny. And there's the acrylic that would cover it. This cuts really nice in the laser cutter. Makes a nice shiny, shiny pattern <laughs> zoomed in. Pretty cool, and with that all cut out, it all went together just as it should have. Glued that up. Originally I was gonna have two layers, but it ended up with three layers to make sure I could fit everything in there. You'll see that in just a bit. Weighted that down with some, some bars that I had. Originally I think those were meant for machining, but worked out okay for this too. In order to stick the nuts in place, what I did was I, I covered it all in petroleum jelly, so that way I could use hot glue on it and hopefully rotate it out without any problem. Put that in there and then tighten it up. So that way it would sit flush with the top layer, top layer of MDF. Then I could put the hot glue on and secure it in place until it was actually screwed in place. This actually worked pretty well. So I have to remember this technique of, of coating it with petroleum jelly for, for whatever, whatever I need to use for, for later. So un unscrew it, and with that coating, it worked out really well. Another layer of glue, and then the hardboard on the back. Shiny surfaces to the back, and won't really be seen in normal, normal usage. A few more weights in the middle, just to make sure everything's weighted down and secured while it's being glued. Then of course I needed to arrange all the PCBs, make sure they were in good position, so it'd be cool to display. It's just an art piece, so why not? I did, however, need one more layer. So that's three layers of MDF, which would be 0.75 inches. I wanted to get that so I could make every, get all my PCBs in there with the components and stuff. Glued that, glued that down and then sometime later, sanded it down. I then used spray paint around the edges to make sure everything blended together nicely. Looks good, and after that, took the acrylic off that protected the paint and stuff. Masked off the bottom, and they used some dark stain on the top. This did a good job of making everything look nice and nice and black, and not so much, not so much like wood, even though it was wood, obviously. And then finally, it was time to take the 
covering off the acrylic. So with that done, it was time for another rearrangement of the of the parts. Getting pretty good, fit fit vertically. And it was time to drill everything, drill the actual mounting hardware. Use a zip tie to make sure I didn't drill too hard or too far, and then screwed it in. If I was doing this now, I might use my portable portable drill that I have at the ready. This wire is pretty neat because you just bend it over and it just kind of stays there because it's not like you're really doing much with it once you install it. Clip that. And then it was time to actually put the parts on permanently or, you know, for now at least. Here you can see several iterations of my Easy Fan 2 board, a camera trigger board, the Graduino Nano board, and even my first PCB that I ever ordered. And of course there was a, uh, some, something working at somebody doing the lawn while I was doing this. So good for them. We, I appreciate that. Looks pretty good there. And then put it on the wall. Now, of course this project could have stopped here. But obviously it's not light up like as was advertised to begin with. So in the second part of this video, I'll kind of go over my process with that. My original idea was to have it battery powered and run off this little PCB that uses an AT Tiny 85. Although I didn't end up using this, it has a couple of transistors built in and it should be a pretty versatile PCB for some other projects. So maybe look for this in the future. And you can see it actually working with the non-addressable LEDs. The idea was that I'd use PWM on this, make it go on with the push of a button, then kind of go off incrementally. Actually, I had to kind of design my own PWM routine because I wired this into the wrong pin. So looks looks good. I was thinking I might use it, but I didn't for various reasons. I did create this interesting effect though with the non-addressable LEDs where it's blinking incrementally. So Maybe you can tell me how I did that. In the end though, I decided to go with a Wemos D1 Mini ESPA266 board running WLED LED control software. I think this was the right decision in the end because it gives you all kinds of Wi-Fi based control options via your phone and stuff. Of course, I needed some way to put the Wemos D1 Mini board here because I wasn't gonna put it on the top. So I decided to make a square hole with my laser. Cause, cause why not? You get the laser, might as well do it. Don't mind the little error on the top there that I may have, may or may not have cut out incorrectly before. The great thing was you can just cover it with a Wemos D1 mini board and no one's a wiser, unless you're watching the video. So thank you for that. Stuck that in there with some actual WS2812B LEDs. Bit of hot glue there. And yeah, I'm pretty much, pretty much in business after, after a little more hot glue. Kept the cover on there, the waterproof cover and used this. Thought that would make a good, a good diffuser. In the end, I think it should have been a bit higher on the board. And I think maybe I could have done that diffuser a little bit better, but you can see the, the effects. It's pretty awesome. You could just change what light based on based on the color wheel. And you can do different patterns as well. But one problem that I had here is you notice a red light, a little red LED that's just blinking kind of incrementally going across. That turned out to be a problem with the firmware, I believe that I put on there. But when I saw this, I thought maybe there was a problem with it not having enough power. I wasn't using a level shifter or a capacitor as I would be recommended for these. So I decided to at least put the capacitor on there soldered this up again. This is actually a new, new board, new Wemos D1 mini board. So this, I'm changing several things at once, which isn't exactly the scientific method, but you know, perhaps it's the engineering method. You know, you throw everything together until it works and then maybe you document it later, right? So got that down. And then another thing that I did was I removed the L blue LED that comes with the Wemos D1 mini board. Otherwise, this just lights up all the time and 
Although it wasn't a huge deal in my case, it was a little bit annoying. I also cut out some diffuser with uh, white acrylic on that laser cutter. And then I put on these labels off my label maker. So thanks Brian for the suggestion. That was definitely a good, a good idea. With that all done, I remounted it and I've been quite happy with the results. You can see it lit up there. The D01 Mini fits right in with the rest of the theme of the, of the project. The AT Mighty 85, that's the boards that I originally thought I'd use to power this. And then besides that, you've got the Easy Fan 2 boards, the different iterations, the Granduino, my bike light, and my original PCB that I made, uh, you know, a year and a half, two years ago. So I'm, I feel like I've advanced from there, kind of, you know, learned, I learn stuff every time and it's, it's really cool to look back and see your successes and failures. Yeah, pretty awesome. So thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you can give it a thumbs up. Hopefully it inspired you or maybe subscribe or even leave me a comment. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy Cook signing off. Oh, there's another. Oh, what is that? Oh, no. All right. See ya.